This is quite a discovery. Fragments of a biblical scroll, along with other relics, have been found in desert caves in Israel. There has been a disturbing incident in Jerusalem that has sent shivers down the spines of many Christians worldwide. Amid Israel's ongoing clash over judicial reform, a coalition consisting of Russia, Iran, Turkey, and other nations has formed against Israel, which has caused concern among many. Furthermore, recent discoveries in Jerusalem, such as the Canaanite cave, have revealed hidden mysteries from the city's past and piqued many people's interest. Join us as we discuss the terrifying discovery of the Canaanite cave in Jerusalem that scares all Christians. Discovery of Canaanite Cave The Canaanite Cave, an alluring archaeological find, reveals a winding tunnel linking the Gahon Spring to the southern end, known as the famous Siloam Spring. Built during the Middle Bronze Age, this engineering masterpiece displays our ancestors' exceptional skills and determination. Moreover, it is evidence of their remarkable abilities in construction and leaves humans awed by what they achieved. On November 29th, Jesus visited Jerusalem, and by extension, the Siloam Pool, and engaged in a significant conversation with the Pharisees. A pivotal moment occurred during his visit there when Jesus encountered a blind man. He instructed the man to wash in the Siloam Pool to illustrate his healing abilities. Showcasing the miraculous healing power ascribed to Jesus, that moment became a turning point. This profound transformation began at the Canaanite cave, a complex tube used as a watering system for the lush crops of Kidron Valley. Scholars debate the cave's origins, leaning towards its construction during the Great Canaanite period. The genius design of the tunnel features strategically positioned outlets that play a critical role in distributing water for agricultural purposes. Showcasing the innovative ways of our ancestors it stands as a testament to historic water resource management. More intriguingly, this complex design was carved from solid rock, which reflects coordinated planning and construction competence. This deliberate construction redirected water from the Gihon Spring to nourish fields. Later on, the Hezekiah Tunnel was redesigned to adapt to changing needs. This famous pool, mentioned once in the Old Testament and twice in the New Testament, John chapter 9 verses 7 and 11, and John chapter 9 verses 1 to 12, narrates a significant event at this location where a man born blind was miraculously healed by Jesus, demonstrating his divine authority in a twofold way. First, to convey that Jesus is God with the power to heal, and second, to clear out the notion that illness results only from personal sin. Temple Mount. During the Second Temple period in times past, the Pool of Siloam was renowned in the Jerusalem suburb of Accra, also known as the Lower City. Sitting about 625 meters above sea level, it is the lowest point in historical Jerusalem. If anyone wanted to visit the Temple Mount, you would have to climb about 115 meters uphill, covering an estimated distance of 625 meters. The Jerusalem Talmud notes that pilgrims would kick off their yearly journey to Jerusalem at the pool. Trekking up to the Temple Mount, they would offer goodies in the Temple Court. It wasn't a mere pool, so pilgrims used it for a ritual cleanup before heading up to the Temple. Hezekiah is behind the Pool of Siloam, building it during his tenure to ward enemies off from the spring's water. Smartly, the pool was fed by a new Siloam tunnel replacing an old Canaanite tunnel, vulnerable to attacks. When the Assyrian king Sennacherib came knocking, Hezekiah took action, and the old Gihon spring outlet was sealed, and the Siloam tunnel took place. This story can be found in 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verses 4. As mentioned in Isaiah chapter 22, verses 9, the pool of Siloam had a nickname called the Lower Pool back in those days. Fed by the ancient Canaanite tunnel, there was an upper pool as well, as referenced in 2 Kings chapter 18 verses 17 and Isaiah chapter 7 verses 3. In the Second Temple period, the pool got a makeover around Alexander Janius's reign, which was from 103 to 76 BCE. 
It was a happening place during Jesus' time as well. In the Gospel of John, there is a story about Jesus sending a blind man there for a miracle. Beyond being a watering hole, it probably served as a gathering spot for religious pilgrimages. Although it is large compared to a typical mitzvah, some folks think it might have been used for ritual baths. After the First Jewish-Roman War in 70 CE, the fate of the pool changed. The Romans destroyed it, and afterward, rain brought sediment from the hills, covering the pool entirely. In the late Roman and Byzantine periods, there was talk of a shrine to the four nymphs built by Hadrian, about AD 135. Despite this shrine not being situated at the precise spot of the Pool of Siloam, it set the stage for the Byzantine reconstruction. In the 5th century, Empress Aelia Eudocia coordinated the construction of another pool near Hezekiah's tunnel. But that was not part of the second temple pool of Siloam. The confusion lingered until the recent discovery. Excavations for Pool of Siloam. Wrapped in mystery for about two millennia is a place hidden in David's old Jerusalem. Archaeologists working on the site have now found secrets. Cleverly created by Jerusalem's water system about 700 years ago in the 7th century BC, the Pool of Siloam is undergoing severe archaeological inspection. Fed by the life-giving waters of the Gihon Spring, the reservoir became an important water system. Underground tubes guiding precious water were included in the clever water system, eventually forming this serene pool. Both Christians and Jews are very excited about this revelation, amplifying its deep significance. This historic pool is not a mere water source. It is immortalized in religious history, especially in the ninth chapter of the Book of John. Hearing about a princess named Judea, that chapter narrates the biblical tale of Jesus. In the 5th century AD, Princess Yudia's story inspired a massive project, a church built to celebrate New Testament miracles. Situated around the historic pool, the magnificent church was loved by most Christians. However, the spot of Jesus' first pool remained a mystery until they were fixing a water line in the city of David. Discovery of Pool of Siloam Archaeologists Ronnie Reich and Eli Shukran stumbled upon a striking discovery in June 2004. This discovery was two ancient stones that peeped after carefully taking a glimpse into a distant era. As they explored deeper, an ancient pool that brimmed with life during the time of Jesus was revealed. There was a trapezium valley situated in a trapezoidal masterpiece that measured 225 feet, with corners slightly greater than 90 degrees and with the widening end oriented towards Tyropawian Valley, a spiritual refuge that exceeded only quenching physical thirst. During the excavation, archaeologists highlighted the Siloam Pool's remains, a site where Jesus performed a miraculous healing of a blind man, according to the Bible. Strengthening the connection between Jesus' acts and ancient Jewish rituals, this discovery pinpoints their interlinkage. After carefully excavating the pool still holding water nestled within today's Arab neighborhood of Siloam, the archaeologists realized it served as a site for Jewish ritual immersions for about 120 years until the year 70, when the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple. Directly aligned with Jewish customs were many of Jesus' deeds, as demonstrated in the miracle of the blind man. As per the Bible, the blind man was going through ritual immersion in the renowned pool for entry into the temple environs. And it was that moment that Jesus took to cure his blindness. The pool's 50-yard length and a channel that brought water from the Siloan Spring have been revealed by these excavation efforts. In addition, archaeologists unearthed a section of stone road leading from the pool to the Jewish temple. Now that it is known that the Siloam pool is attached to the temple mount, there is a road that links the two elements. The whole picture is clearer today. Archaeologist L.A. Shukran stated, shedding light on the complicated connections between the Siloam pool and the spiritual epicenter of the Temple Mount. Recovered Antiques The Bible scholar Stephen Pian also shared insights articulating the spiritual significance of the Siloam pool's waters. 
He further noted that the waters were considered so pure that they could purify as much as a leper, buttressing Jesus' choice to cure a blind man in these pure waters. Pian emphasized the temple's limitations that barred disabled individuals because people were healed both physically and spiritually. This discovery helps bring the context of Jewish practice alive. He continued by saying that the discovery brings the gospel alive in the context of Jewish practice. Furthermore, archaeologists from the Israeli government's Antiquities Authority also unearthed coins, pottery shards, and a stone bottle cork from the biblical era. All these served as concrete evidence linking the site to the Siloam Pool. The stone-lined pool, with steps on every side, has significant uncovered portions, including corners, an esplanade, and the water channel. According to the New Testament, Jesus applied clay to a blind man's eyes and directed him to wash in the purifying waters of the Siloam Pool. A significant stop, the pool serves as a ritual immersion site and a water source for pilgrims who make their three yearly journey to Jerusalem. Jews would camp around it, and Jesus, as a pilgrim in Jerusalem, probably frequented the area for its water supply. The Israeli Antiquities Authority is convincing the Greek Orthodox Church, the owner of the land, to continue the excavation. The pool is believed to be below an overgrown vegetable garden and large trees. By removing old pipes to link the esplanade and water channel to the steps leading into the pool, archaeologists aim to uncover more. Significance of Pool of Siloam Aligning with Jewish traditions, it was a sacred spot for ritual cleansing. Some experts speculate that it served as a Roman-style swimming sanctuary, offering relaxation and delight to people who sought it. The discovery of the pool immensely implicates Christian theology, as it becomes a source of solace for true believers, twisting faith and history. Before the Siloam Pool was destroyed, it was used for centuries. The water led to the Shiloak Pool, and according to Jewish sources, it was from this pool that the Sin waters were gathered and mixed with the ashes of the Red Heifer. Some time ago, a priest sprinkled the water onto someone who had become ritually impure due to coming in contact with a corpse. The person whom the water was sprinkled upon then became purified. This rite was very important because it was forbidden for Jews to enter the temple while in this form of impurity. After the completion of this holy ritual, a Jew could then ascend to the Temple Mount. To date, this biblical prohibition is still in effect, despite the absence of a temple. Until the next red heifer is found according to its very strict specifications, which Jews believe will be in the days of Messiah, ascending to the Temple Mount is forbidden for Jews as everyone in the present day is presumed to have this impurity. On the annual Jewish festival of Sukkot, when the temple stood, the cherished commandment of the water libation was performed. Water was gathered from the Siloam pool, brought to the holy temple, and poured upon the altar. According to Jewish sources, the joy that accompanied this procedure was so intense that one who has not seen this rejoicing has never experienced real enjoyment. Water indicates purification and rebirth in Christianity, and the Pool of Siloam is a powerful symbol of baptism, including the nature of Christian rites. Moreover, the Bible pinpoints justification by faith, and the discovery of this ancient pool creates a tangible link between biblical accounts and the lives of current Christians. Becoming a dramatic representation of spiritual rebirth through baptism, Siloam Pool symbolizes the purging of sins and transforming believers. In addition to being a historical relic, it is also a pilgrimage site and a cornerstone of the Christian faith, with connections to several Bible stories. Offering believers both historical and spiritual truths, the miracle lies within the waters of this pool. According to the Pool of Siloam, it is an integral component of Christianity standing as an inspiration to the revolutionary journey of believers and connecting them to their faith's historical and spiritual roots. Amidst all of these, believers find comfort and solace in their faith. Atheists, on the other hand, keep looking for concrete evidence to see and touch. 
An established factor is that both parties understand how powerful belief can be in propelling people and showcasing the great mystery of wonders. The historic pool is a witness to this mystery, inviting people to explore how spiritual experiences can transform lives. It further sparks speculation about accepting reality beyond the natural world and how faith relevantly impacts people's lives. King Hezekiah To safeguard this important water supply, King Hezekiah ordered the construction of a tunnel that redirected the spring's water to the southwestern part of the city. This genius move generated a steady flow of water, promoting the growth and sustainability of the city. Biblical Pool of Siloam As mentioned in St. John's Gospel, this pool holds a special place in the hearts of believers, rousing powerful emotions and inciting religious debates. A striking mention of the Pool of Siloam in the Gospel of John appears in John chapter 9, verse 7, where a blind man's sight is restored by washing in its waters. He smeared the mud on the blind man's eyes and said to him, Go wash in the Pool of Siloam, the Bible chapter says, meaning of Siloam. The term Siloam, carrying a deeper meaning, translates into scent. Plunging further into its significance, it is interpreted as ascending out, gushing forth of water. This suggests a depiction of water actively gushing or being sent into the pool, emphasizing a physical rather than a spiritual essence. Its references to real historical figures and places are some of the remarkable aspects of the New Testament. From Herod the Great, Matthew chapter 2 verse 1, to Pontius Pilate, Matthew chapter 27 verse 2, to Caesar Augustus and Quirinius Luke chapter 2 verse 1, to King Agrippa and Herod Antipas Acts chapter 25 verse 13, and Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. These are individuals tied to historical records. The pool is a testament to an actual historical location referenced in the New Testament. These historical references, cities, and locations scattered throughout the Holy Book significantly contribute to the credibility of the Gospels. Furthermore, this connection between the biblical pool and its archaeological counterpart generates huge comfort to Christians, reinforcing their trust in the existence of miraculous events. A tangible link is established between faith and historical accuracy. In 2004, the discovery of the Pool of Siloam fueled curiosity, potentially validating the biblical tale. The prominent similarities between the archaeological site and the biblical narrative offer critical proof for Christians, solidifying their faith in supernatural events narrated in sacred books. On the other hand, Thoughtful skeptics present opposing arguments, accentuating that the pool's existence does not explicitly prove supernatural events in the Bible. They advocate for critical thinking that affirms believing in the pool's reality exempts embracing every aspect of the biblical narrative as complete truth. Encouraging introspection, this ongoing debate fosters an environment where both faith and skepticism coexist. For devoted Christians, the Siloam Pool is concrete evidence of the heavenly might of Jesus. Viewed as a testimony to Jesus' exceptional skills, the healing of a blind man in this sacred water is a reminder of his life's achievements. Transforming into a symbol of faith, the pool evokes a profound connection to biblical events and spiritual principles. Attention naturally turns to the Pool of Siloam and Bethesda when delving deep into the pools of Jerusalem, as both pools hold significant importance in biblical accounts. Linked to miraculous healings, these waters showcase the profound impact of the limitless healing abilities of Jesus. The incidents at these pools, where Jesus restored sight and healed paralysis, demonstrate his caring nature for both physical and spiritual well-being. Recent Archaeological Discoveries Near Jerusalem Archaeological discoveries near Jerusalem disclose a striking palace believed to be from the biblical Jewish kingdom. Located in East Tipia, the site boasts finely carved stone houses and artifacts, including three ornate stone capitals. The intentional burial of these priceless goods 
possibly dating back to the 9th or 7th centuries, BC intrigues and puzzles scholars. An addition to the mystery is the Canaanite Tunnel, which is an impressive ancient waterway in Jerusalem constructed sometime in the Middle Bronze Age, raising doubts about its origins. The lush Kidron Valley farms utilize the tunnel as a watering system, displaying advanced engineering ideas and its clever design for distributing water. Skeptics are confronted by the tunnel's existence, providing a tangible link to the past. Meanwhile, a relevant landmark in ancient history, David's City, incites controversy and criticism, while skeptics doubt biblical accounts. Subsequent findings further confirm the city's existence. The remnants of a palace overlooking the Temple Mount serve as witness to the grandeur of ancient Israelite rulers, as the city's significance intertwines with religious writings. It serves as an everlasting testament to historical facts. Inscriptions on a stone, possibly commissioned by the reigning king then, unveil a significant detail. The engraving names Isaiah of the House of David, linking the city to King David's genealogy with its Hebrew-like language. The discovery confronts skeptics and offers belief in the historical legitimacy of the Davidic kingdom in the face of contradictions. Atheists grapple with new findings that challenge old narratives, recognizing the importance of profound examination. Recent discoveries, such as inscriptions citing Isaiah and David's ancestry, cast doubt on historical skepticism. Prompting a re-examination of different viewpoints, this evidence fosters an environment where doubts and beliefs coexist. The exploration of ancient ruins and forgotten history reveals the mysterious tapestry of our shared human journey. Taking us deeper into our origins, each discovery enhances our understanding of past societies as a storage of echoes from other civilizations. History invites us to accept the intricacies and mysteries that define our collective existence. As we navigate the Pool of Siloam, the City of David, and other historical revelations, contradictions emerge. This exploration prompts reflection presenting believers with confirmations, while skeptics face hurdles going beyond particular perspectives. Exploring ancient ruins compels us to identify the depth of humanity's past, nurturing a nuanced understanding where doubt and conviction coexist amicably. The History of Gihon Spring Also known as the Fountain of the Virgin and St. Mary's Pool, the Gihon Spring originated in the Kidron Valley, right outside Jerusalem's old city walls. Thousands of years ago, settlers depended on the spring for water and irrigation because the current of the water flow from the Gihon Spring fluctuates. Early settlers created the Pool of Siloam on the southern slope of the city of David, where water could accumulate for use when the spring was dry. To date, the remains of three different pools from three different eras can be seen in the city of David National Park. The pools are the Upper Siloam Pool, Lower Pool, and the Byzantine Pool. The excavated remains of the original city of Jerusalem are also located in the park. Matter of fact, it is possible to walk through Hezekiah's underground tunnel to the Byzantine Pool. The walk is in knee-deep water, and it is not recommended for claustrophobic people. Many places, including Jerusalem, had water challenges in the course of history. Man's use of the Gihon Spring, upper pool of Siloam, traces back to the Canaanites in the Mid-Bronze Age, 1800 to 1700 BC, who diverted the flow of water through channels dug 20 feet or 6 meters deep, then covered the channel with slabs of stone. Collected in the upper pool of Siloam, the water flowed to the southern end of the city of David. In the late 20th century, excavations revealed a Canaanite-era fortified passage leading from the ancient city's location to the Gihon Spring, where a fortified tower stood above the spring. Without being exposed to enemy attacks, this would allow residents to safely reach the spring to draw water. During the Bronze Age in the Israelite period, a system of tunnels brought water from the spring to the city's well gate, where Jerusalem residents could collect water without having to leave the city walls. Most archaeologists claim that it was through this tunnel that Joab, King David's general, 
entered to conquer the city from the Jebusites. See 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 8. Until Hezekiah made a new tunnel that dried out this tunnel, this water system continued to be used under the Judean monarchy. Lower Pool of Siloam is a spring that features in the biblical Book of Kings as the site where Solomon was crowned king of Israel. It is stated in the Book of Chronicles that the city was threatened by the king of Assyria during the reign of King Hezekiah. Preparing for a likely attack, Hezekiah reinforced the city. The biblical Gihon Spring has flown through the Hezekiah Tunnels for 2600 years. Around the time of Abraham, approximately 3800 years ago, the ancient Canaanites built a fortress on top of the source of the Gihon Spring. An impressive underground tunnel, which led to the water source underground, was built to access the water source. Furthermore, the spring was redirected from the vulnerable Canaanite surface channel to an underground hewn tunnel known as the Siloam Tunnel, or Hezekiah's Tunnel. Bringing water to the newly constructed lower pool of Siloam, this underground channel made it possible for residents to safely access water from the pool without leaving the city walls. King Solomon was possibly coronated at this pool. See Kings, chapter 1, verse 33. According to Jewish sources, it was a custom to anoint kings by a flowing water source. It symbolized that their reign should be as endless as the flowing waters. According to an inscription on the tunnel wall, Hezekiah's tunnel was dug from both ends, meeting in the middle. In 701 BC, the Assyrian attack came and held Hezekiah's city under siege, but the siege failed. Those within the city had water from the spring throughout the siege. Sometime in the 1st century BC, the Siloam Pool was reconstructed and remained in use through the Second Temple period. After 70 AD, the pool was destroyed. In the Byzantine era, Empress Aelia Eudocia ordered the construction of a pool at the end of Hezekiah's tunnel, about 64 meters from the Second Temple period lower pool, and the new pool was named the Byzantine Pool. The Byzantine Pool was thought to be the lower pool, before extensive archaeological excavations. This pool is still visited by pilgrims and hikers at the end of the walkthrough of Hezekiah's Tunnel. With a steep staircase leading down to the water, the pool is surrounded by four walls. Rich in history that is backed with concrete evidence, Jerusalem is a place for the books. This is a big win for Christians and history enthusiasts as they are now supported by several factors that they can rely on to boost their faith. Corresponding with the discovery of this astonishment, does the idea of showcasing your up-to-date knowledge appeal to you? Recently, our team unveiled the I Found It tough phone cases. Furthermore, there is an ongoing sale on the website. Take advantage of this opportunity to grab this durable, reliable, and remarkable phone case at a discounted rate. To place your order, simply click on the link available in the description. What do you think about the new information on the Pool of Siloam? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Kindly like and subscribe to our channel for more thrilling videos like this.